Hi, boys and girls. Welcome back. Uh, today we are going to continue our study of the missionaries that um, came from France and into what would become Wisconsin, uh, the Jesuit priests. Yesterday we learned about Father Menard, who established the first mission near Shaquamagan Bay, near Ashland. Today we come to a gentleman who followed in his footsteps, Father Jean-Claude or Jean-Claude Alouez, and I consider him a well-respected man. So, Father Alouez was born in France, studied at the Jesuit missionary, or the Jesuit school again, and um, by the time 1658 rolled around, he had landed in Quebec to begin his mission work. And he started studying and learning from the people, again, living around Quebec in the St. Lawrence River area. And he was quite adept. Within seven years or so, he had picked up well over 10 languages. That means speaking and listening fluently to 10 different languages. I can barely understand English terribly well. 10 languages. My father speaks five languages. I was blown away. He's been studying languages for 50 years. Alois in seven years was fluent in over 10 languages. Wow. And not only that, he was also, not that he just learned language, but he was a good communicator and a caring gentleman. He healed sick people, negotiated peace, and he was known as a very fair-minded person, which made him respected by French officials, fur traders, and all the indigenous people he met as well. The other thing that Alouez did um, is he had incredibly detailed records that are still being studied today, which give historians great insight into this time period, how the people lived there, both French and native. Um, and it was said that Alouez uh, baptized over 10,000 people in the Americas. Now, whether you're Christian in faith or not, the fact that you get 10,000 indigenous people to be baptized tells you that he was well respected by anyone who met him, or many who met him. So let's continue to find a little bit more. Um, he followed in Father Menard's footsteps. In fact, Father Menard in 1660 had established that mission and had that awful winter. Um, before disappearing, trying to um, bring some food to some starving Huron. Well, Father Alouez came by in, in uh, 1665, landed here near Ashland, and reopened that mission, and spent the next four years working in this area. He opened another mission up near Madeline Island. And as it was happening, uh, there was a, a large war between the Iroquois peoples and the Huron and Ottawa. And the Iroquois were displacing many of these Huron and Ottawa people. So there were refugees fleeing the fighting, and many were kind of coming through the UP, making their way west, and, you know, Father Alouez tended to them, cared for them, fed them, taught them, and ended up gaining great respect by these Huron and Ottawa people. And as they moved their way out and met more people, they dropped his name. And Father Alouez, around 1670, had made his way into the interior of Wisconsin, made contact with the Menominee, Potawatomi, and the Fox. And, oh, quick side note, when Father Alois left the mission here, guess who took his place? Father Marquette. Remember Marquette and Juliet who went down the Wisconsin River, found the Mississippi River? Yeah, well, Father Marquette took over that mission before he came through. So Father Marquette and, and Father Alois were buddies in, in a way, or colleagues for sure. So at any rate, between the years of 1670 and 1671, uh, the relationships that Alois made with the Fox, Menominee, Potawatomi allowed him to build missions for them all over the eastern part of the state, including modern-day Green Bay, Berlin, and this Fort Francis Xavier near Pierre became kind of his home base, which um, where he had his missions work all through eastern Wisconsin. Okay, so... Not only was Father Alouez well respected by the French and by the indigenous, he he not he didn't open the door for more French to come into Wisconsin, but he widened the door hugely by building strong relationships with these people. In fact, he was asked by the French government to speak to all of these different tribes and, and was the keynote speaker in which France, again, whether you agree with this or not, declared the Great Lakes and Mississippi River region as belonging to French territory. For a guy to be able to go into a room of indigenous people and declare that this land is his, it belongs to the French government, and they didn't attack him, proves that he was well-respected by the people around him.